The forests of Indiana are valuable resources that need to be managed. From the labs to the field, the work being done will write the future for our trees. As we follow the path of the tree, from its long life in the woodlands to the products we use every day, we'll learn that the science of forestry goes beyond the forest. It's time for another expedition to witness our Indiana forests at work. This program was produced in partnership with the Indiana Division of Forestry and is made possible through the support of the Indiana Society of American Foresters, dedicated to advancing the science, education, technology, and practice of forestry in Indiana. FedEx, supporting scientific inquiry at an early age with an emphasis on solutions to environmental and conservation needs of the future. The Indiana Hardwood Lumberman's Association, whose members share a passion for creating the world's finest hardwood products and a determination to maintain the sustainable productivity of our nation's forest resources. The American Tree Farm System. The Indiana Arborist Association. Additional support was provided by the following organizations. Hi, I'm Rick Proslin, and welcome to another expedition. Today we'll be investigating Indiana's forests. Can you imagine what life would be like without the products we get from trees? Our entire society relies on trees. In fact, we depend upon trees for the very air we breathe. But did you realize that they depend upon us, too? Almost everywhere you look in Indiana, you can see at least one tree. But what makes up a forest? A forest is a, an aggregation or a grouping of trees. These groupings of trees are a world of their own and home to a variety of life forms. Many forests here in Indiana have many species of trees. And in addition to that, we have a lot of plants and shrubs and vines, and of course the wildlife that's part of the forest as well. So it's a very complex community. Today's forests cover about 30% of the Earth's total land area. There are many different types of forests. Some forests are always green and look the same all year. Some change with the seasons, and others can change right in front of your eyes. But all forests are valuable resources that, when managed properly, can provide renewable materials needed to sustain life. Indiana has a lot of trees, but we used to have even more. For most of Indiana's forest history, the only humans that shared the environment with the trees were American Indians. The Native American Indians were the first caretakers of the forest. These are the types of forests that were commonly burned by Native Americans to maintain the oak overstory. Going even further back, the land that is now Indiana used to be an ocean 500 million years ago. But as recent as 250 years ago, Indiana was nothing but trees that were nearly 200 feet tall. Did you know, Indiana's forests are deciduous, which means most of the trees lose their leaves in the fall. Eventually, settlers moved in and started to use the forest resources. When the European settlers first got here in Indiana, we were approximately 85% forested. 
They were interested primarily in clearing areas to produce crops that they could live off of and also ultimately sell. In those days, the science of forestry was unknown here. No one really considered what might happen if they just kept on cutting down the trees. The supply seemed endless. Eventually, what used to be a lush forest full of life and possibility became a stump museum. We started at about 85% forested. By about 1900 to 1920, we were down to about five or six percent forested. But thanks to some early efforts, naturalists and scientists began to change the way we thought about our trees and the way we managed our forests. One of the first visionaries in the world of forestry was a man named Charles Dean. Dean, an Indiana native, grew up on a farm near Bluffton. His early interests were in botany. These interests led him to become Indiana's first state forester. In 1922, Charles Dean predicted that the forest would be gone in 15 years if nothing was done to protect them. He led the Division of Forestry in planting thousands of trees, added land to the Indiana State Managed Forests, and helped change laws to encourage management of private woodlands. Did you know, in his lifetime, Charles Dean visited every township in the state and collected over 73,000 plants? Thanks to the foresight of a handful of people more than a century ago, Indiana's forests have definitely made a comeback. We've made a great recovery in forested area in Indiana. We went from about one and a half million acres of forest in the early 1900s to over four and a half million acres of forest today. As the science of forestry began to develop, more and more people started getting passionate about trees. And it's a good thing too, because the need for forest products keeps growing and growing. A world without trees would be a sad one indeed. There's just something about the trees here in Indiana that gets in your blood. I've always had a desire as a very young man to be involved in the lumber business. It's a natural product. It's a green product. It uh, is good. It is very renewable. It's just uh, the feeling of looking back and you've accomplished something. Another world-class product from Indiana is something called veneer. Here at Amos Hill, veneer quality hardwood is shipped in and turned into paper-thin sheets of a material used to cover any surface to give the appearance of a beautiful, solid hardwood. I feel this industry is uh, extremely important to Indiana. Uh, specifically, it provides jobs. My feelings are that producing these logs into thin sheets of veneer more or less helps spread that log out over a vast area as opposed to uh, say cutting it up for firewood or whatever. We take the logs up here on the log yard. Each log is, is identified by its own number. All the logs are tagged and uh, we process them. The reason we water the logs is to keep them uh, from drying out. Timber from the log yard goes to the debarking machine. The bark from the logs is used to help power the plant or sold as mulch. We don't waste anything. Uh, we try to retain as much of this log as we possibly can. After the bark has been removed, the logs go into the mill to be cut into halves or quarters. Halves and quarters are kept together through the saw mill. The milled timber then goes into cooking vats. These vats get the logs to the perfect moisture level. From there, the wood moves on to the slicing. 
What is that thing? That's called a vertical veneer slicer. Here, giant razors cut the logs into thin sheets. This is the veneer. These razors are extremely sharp and well maintained. The sharper the edge, uh, the smoother the cut of veneer. The sheets of veneer are now ready for the dryer. I think I just ruined one. There you go. I didn't do that. Uh, yeah, I think we'll pass on Rick's application. The sheets come out of the dryer ready for evaluation. On the grading floor, the veneer is rated by quality. It is then moved to a storage facility. Samples of various grades go to the showroom where customers make their selection. Did you know Purdue University has something called a wood research lab? Yep, there's a lab for that. When I started doing woodworking at home, you know, it's just a hobby. I, I, I never pictured myself uh, running a wood research lab. I didn't even know such a thing existed. In the wood lab, wood and wood products are designed, tested, and improved upon. In fact, the most common way to test a wooden chair was developed right here in Indiana. We like to joke and say this is our medieval torture chamber for furniture. This test is used all over the world. In the stress test room, a machine is used to test wood strength. And this machine right now is putting a lot of stress on this beam and they're actually monitoring when it will deflect or get pushed down. And I'm starting to hear a little bit of a cracking. Pressure is slowly applied to the wood material. Technicians monitor the pressure. Obviously, Here we test the material all the way to failure. And you can hear it cracking. Oh, there we go. The research being done here helps to improve wood products for the future. It's, it's a natural beauty and it's a gift to us that we should take advantage of. I get to use a renewable natural material and make beautiful things out of it. There are many ways to make your own wood products. Small groups like this one in Danville gather weekly to talk, relax, and maybe even get around to carving some wood. These folks are here for fun and represent a variety of skill levels. Dallas, an experienced lathe worker, just started carving. I like to create things, turn a block of wood into something. I just love wood. You might be surprised to learn how a scrap piece of wood like this can be turned into art. A lathe can be used to turn wood into a usable product very quickly. It's renewable. It's something that, you know, we can use each and every little piece of it. You don't have to be a professional forester or a tree farmer to be involved with trees. For me, it's always been the way I've learned how to connect myself to the rest of life. That to know you can plant even the seedling this big and you can come back and show your kids I planted that with a bunch of other kids, and this is what we were doing in the second grade. It's a bigger interrelated system, and if we as citizens aren't involved, then we best not sit back. And so it's important for all of us to recognize and be involved in our Indiana forests and the decisions that have an impact on them for the future. I mean, a lot of people think of us foresters as tree butchers. Everything that we're doing at the Division of Forestry and, and foresters in general is for the long term with our goal of making a site and what we do better than what we left it. A person who plants a garden enjoys it for a season, but a person who plants trees has the potential to enjoy them for a lifetime. From the trees growing in our woods to the products we use every day, our forests are one of the most important resources in the world. It's up to us to take care of them, manage them, and even appreciate them. I'm Rick Crossland. I'll see you on the next expedition.